How y'all feel out there? It's about to go down. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Check this out. Introducing authentic realness. Again, we're back, everyone. It's season two. Wow. Seems like this year is really flying. I, I can't speak for anybody else, but I thought the year just came in. And here we are already operating near mid-year, because by the time you all hear this, we will be in July. And with that, it's just amazing how season two is already going really well for us. So thank you all for listening. I cannot stress enough that our Authentic Realness podcast would not exist without you all. And I want to say thank you here at the beginning. I'll definitely say it again at the end. I do want to sound like a broken record when it comes to appreciation for you all and your listening. And we were talking earlier in the earlier session and of getting prepared and just... <laughs> I won't put anybody on front street, but it's it's interesting how people don't like to to give credit and, and to say thank you. And I never want to be one of those people. And additionally, I do attribute a large part of that to the core of my family of coming from two families that show a lot of appreciation and thanks, but also my Southern roots. And so often, many of you have heard me say that there's nothing Southern about me. Yet, I do know that a large part of who I am in that regard happens to be a large part of that Southern tradition. Now, outside of that, I, I definitely would say that that's about it. And I also say that the only reason I was born in Orangeburg, South Carolina, is because God knew I was going to have a very big head. So whenever I start thinking that I'm getting beyond myself and that my stuff does not stink. He reminds me that, hey, boy, you, Aaron R. Plush, you're from Orangeburg, South Carolina. Bring it down. And literally, I just bring it right back down. So God, in his infinite wisdom, always knows what he's doing. Theo, what's up, brother? How are you tonight? Everything is good. I'm just in a state of gratitude, as always, and just grateful. You're low, brother. Like, what, Is it Barry White? Well, what's happening here? Uh well, you know, I'm 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 amongst amongst the employed again, so you know, my, my, my my morale may be a little low key, but I am grateful. I'm grateful for another day. Grateful for what God's doing in my life. No complaints at all. Congratulations again, brother. Good stuff, Fabby. How are you, my friend? Hello, I'm doing well. Thank you. Excited to be here. Any sharing for tonight from you? No real sharing. Happy to be alive, feeling blessed. That's all we can ever ask for, right? Absolutely. That, that's a significant blessing and thank God for it. So thank you for chiming in. All right. Well, let's jump right in. And tonight our topic is around, you know what? <laughs> have I jumped right in on any of the other episodes? You sure have not. <laughs> <laughs> So it's taken me four episodes to get to that, to remember that. And some producer you are, is it that you just thought that we were moving away from that? Is, is that what's going We're just going on? with the flow. It flowed right, so we just went with it. You are horrible. Horrible. But yes, we're, we're jumping But you right hired me, so what does that say? Well, I guess that makes me horrible too, huh? Fair enough. <laughs> But it would be the fourth episode would be the one that I would get it right. So I understand that. that that's all. It all makes sense. And, and all the wonderful things that the number four means in my life. 
I'll talk about that some other time. But in that, let's jump right in. And tonight's episode is one where we have a very serious topic. And we want to talk about adversity. And from a textbook dictionary vantage point, we're talking definition of adversity from the vantage point of difficulties and or misfortune. And even one of the examples that's given here from the dictionary talks about resilience in the face of adversity or she or he overcame many adversities. And what really brought this to mind for me, and certainly I hope that you all have identified that a large part of the topics that we have for this podcast, our Authentic Realness Podcast ARP, is one governed by God. And, and ultimately, God is constantly giving me the topics for these sessions. The other thing is a large part of it is, is through lived experiences. It's, it's about what's happening in life, what's on my mind, what are some of the discussions that I've had in recent times? What are some of the things that I'm seeing on LinkedIn? What are some of the things that I'm seeing in the news? What are some of the things that I'm just seeing in general? What are people talking about? Friendship circle, people at work, various other folks. And what I'm finding is that at some point or another, there's adversity that we all have experienced in our lives. Many of us, as we're listening to this episode right now, may very well be experiencing our most difficult life adversity up to this point. And I'm here to be the bearer of good news, to know that there's always a silver lining in all things. And for those of us that choose to trust God, that we can definitely get to the other side of adversity. One of the things that I've identified in my life, because I really try to look at life from a big picture lens at all times. I always try to look at things from the, the bigger picture. And what I've seen with a lot of the adversity in my life is, one, is it really that big of a deal? Like, am I making this bigger than it is? And I tell you, for a very long time, I was. Like, the smallest of things would be a big deal for me. No longer there. The other thing that I've identified when it comes to adversity is really acknowledging for what it, for what it is. No sugarcoating, not making it better than it is, but really looking at it for what it truly is and putting it in its appropriate place. And then the other thing that I do is because God is wrapped in every component of my life, be it professionally, be it personally, be it socially, be it anything that's going on in my life, I've invited God in. So I have God as my constant, which I bring him in to all adversity in my life. Like So any type thing where there's an issue, God is invited in. When it's a good time, God is invited in. Regardless of whatever it is, any type situation, God is in it. So that's the big picture painting, bringing in both Fabi and Theo to talk about this. And then we're going to more so move into me from a corporate perspective, from me as a consultant, to be able to show those parallels of how I've been able to get through adversity in the workplace, me as a consultant, me in my life, but I wanted to paint this big picture, the topic that we're talking about first, before we do that dive in. So Theo, I'm going to come to you. And when I shared this topic with you all last week, because one of the things that we've been really focusing on, and I shared this with you all before, is preparation. We know that preparation is key. So I've committed to making sure that the team is aware of what the topics are in advance to get their thoughts around what they want to say, what they want to talk about, so that we all can be in tune with the discussion without it being scripted. So, Theo, when I sent this topic of adversity to you, what was the first thing that came to mind? Life is hard, but fair. Okay, say that again. Life is hard, but fair. Okay. You know, a lot of times we go through life and we it's easy to get on a pity party because it's okay. like, whoa, it's me okay. type thing. But if you keep living, you understand that even in adversity, everything works 
works together. Like there's a cause and effect for everything. And there's a reason around the reason why things happen the way they happen. So it actually just thinking about the idea of adversity, it changed my approach to when things happen, when adverse situations happen. Like we, I shared something that happened at work earlier today with you before we actually started recording. It's sure. like, you know, even though that happened, there was a lesson in it. So sure. it wasn't so much an adverse situation. It was just a learning experience per se. So just thinking of that word and looking back at situations, it's changed my perspective in how I go about things and how I view things. But is life really fair? I'm really going to challenge you on that one. No, it really ain't. Okay. I mean, but it's it's based on how you look at it. Sure. You know, I would you say can... God is fair, but I definitely wouldn't say that life is yeah. fair. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll take that. I'll yeah. take that. And, and, and I, I'm definitely, I'm just putting it out there because that caught me when, when you said that, because I, I'm so used to people saying that things aren't, my, my trainer tells me all the time life isn't fair because <laughs> for, for those who I haven't shared this with, so I have this big party every five years, one coming up January 2025. And yeah, like I, I'm in the gym hitting it hard. I, I have, I'm not trying to get to a specific weight, but I'm definitely getting to a specific look. And certain folks will be able to, to see that look for those folks who've been invited. I'm excited. We're going to have a great time. But in that, this working out thing, I have this tyrant of a trainer who's amazing, but he's a tyrant. And he constantly tells me when I don't want to do stuff and when I say I'm not doing that or I don't like this and I hate this, he constantly says, well, life ain't fair. And, and it's almost like that's a broken record in my ear. And in that, <laughs> to your point, Theo, I do look at that as a, as a level of adversity, but I also overcome it because I know that there's an end result that I'm working toward. But I do agree with him. Like this life thing isn't fair. It's all about how you decide and choose to respond to it. But the fairness of it is I, I just don't see it. But go ahead. That that, that was it for me. You know, it's <laughs> it, I'm really in, just in a place of, changing the the way I view certain situations sure. and it, it is is really helping my perspective because you know it's easy to go down the rabbit hole when you look at a situation that's adverse oh absolutely when you when you look at oh I'm not being treated right or I feel like it should have went a different way when you get stuck in that yeah. it's going to affect other areas of your life so the really is me up. folks yep, is that's what it. I call it mm -hmm. got it okay fair Fabian what about you when, when I first presented this topic and said hey we're going to be talking about adversity what came to mind? For me, it's that it's it's constant, meaning that I, as long as you're living, I feel like you're just going to be experiencing adversity. Sure. And so it's how are you going to react to sure. it? For me, I tend to get very stressed out. Mm. And that leads to me getting anxious and having anxiety. And so what helps me whenever I'm experiencing that is to really take a step back okay. and kind of walk myself through what I'm feeling. Sure why I'm feeling this way and kind of walk, just walk my step, myself through different steps to allow me to hopefully be able to overcome that. But as Theo mentioned, I do feel like every time you face adversity, I try to look at like, what is this trying to teach me? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's patience, maybe it's understanding, mm -hmm. maybe it's how to solve an issue, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And so I think for me, it's, it's, it's just something that you're going to constantly experience. And so really understanding when you're facing it and how to, how to deal with it. Yeah. And it sounds like, Fabi, that a, a large part of, of your processing may be some therapy type techniques that other folks could adopt for their lives as well. Am I correct there? Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's stuff that I've learned from my therapist is really being able to kind of talk yourself through like what you're feeling, allow yourself to feel it. First of all, yeah. talk yourself through like, really like, what are you feeling? Why are you feeling that way? Why are you reacting to it? Sure. And then trying to understand like how you're able to like move past it. Sure. Which really boils down to a lowest common denominator of being honest with self. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Great. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, thank you both for helping to frame this whole conversation on adversity for me. I'm going to look at me as a consultant because we can go back to the days before I decided to officially launch myself as a consultant. And a large part of the adversity there was just even in my mind of, I had this thought in my mind where I would have left my immediate past former employer that I was with that moved me to South Florida, actually from 2017 
Was it until 22, Fabi, or 21? I want to say 21. Okay. So in that mm-hmm. timeline, my thought would be that I would leave that role, move to a C-suite role, and then retire as a consultant. And so after leaving that employer, God was like, no, you're going to do this consulting thing now. Mm-hmm. And you're going to formulate yourself and, and get that that energy under you to be a consultant. Now, ultimately, I, I may very well allow you to move into a C-suite role and then move to consulting and retire in this space. Yet, I had the arrangement of the of how God had it ordained mixed up. Now, in that, where the adversity was, was it's a, it was an internal one of fighting myself in, oh, no, God, it's too early. I'm not supposed to be doing this yet. So I had to overcome me. And, and for a lot of people, you're, like, you're probably thinking like, wow, I never thought about internal adversity. It's a real thing. And I tell you all that so often, <laughs> many of us like to talk about the enemy and that the enemy is doing something. The enemy is causing this adversity for my life and all those type of things. And a lot of times it, it really isn't the enemy, it's the inner me. And when I had that revelation of the inner me that I had to get over as being the adversity in my life, it allowed me to move forward with becoming a consultant. Now, the hallelujah moment in that is that I've seen significant success as a consultant, that these eight services that I offer, God has blessed me immensely to be able to operate within them. He's allowed me to work with several companies. He's allowing me to work full time with the company right now, as well as affording me the opportunity to have clients on the outside of that, that just are not a conflict to the work that I'm doing day in and day out with quote unquote, what's considered the full-time job. If I go back before now, when I think about adversity in the workplace, that's just (laughs) limitless, if you will. There've just been so many life situations that I've learned throughout the course of my career. And for whatever reason, this is one that I thought that I was over, but I'm I'm gonna share a very personal story, which was funny. So (laughs) this was back in, I fear about to date myself and I'm only 21. So nobody (laughs) tries to do this math. This had to be probably 2003. 2004, somewhere in that ballpark, because I moved to New York in 05. So yeah, 03, 04. And I had a work situation where there was somebody I was working with where she, there was a lot of envy from her vantage point. And, and I, I knew that she was not very fond of me from the start. But again, it's the workplace. We're not here to be friends. We're here to work. So we coexisted. We worked together. And there was a situation where we were supposed to be going out to a community health center. And I ended up oversleeping because we were supposed to meet out someplace publicly. We were going to drive separately. I'm calling her cell phone. Once I did wake up, she never answers. So I don't know where she is. I didn't know the details of where we're going. So I went into the office. Well, lo and behold, I'm thinking everything's fine. She gets into the office the next day and just acting very weird. as She didn't want to speak and all those type of things. So at the time, I'm early career, but I I am director level. So I I meet with one of the execs of the company. She's like, well, this is serious. What's so serious? She's like, well, you missed this trip and you didn't try to reach out to your colleague and whatever. So ultimately I'm like, okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to suspend you for two days. (laughs) Fine. Now, In hindsight, I recognize there was a significant part of this that I didn't handle well. Because the me of today would not have just said, okay. The me of today would have been very clear as to the details of everything that happened and would have been very clear that as a human, oversleeping is something that could happen. I made every attempt to reach out to this person to call them, Several times, even when I was in the office, never answered. 
sent them an email, et cetera. So I had done my due diligence, but this was one of those situations because this is somebody who already had, quote unquote, a perspective about me. This is their great opportunity to, quote unquote, get me. Now, I'm sharing this story from a point of early career. I saw it as a really big deal. This point of career, I don't see it that way at all. I would have handled it differently. And I'm sure that had I really been the bold person that I am today to stand up for myself, the two-day suspension likely would not have happened because there would have been a full explanation of what went on, why it went on, how it went on, and all of the details of the situation. But early career didn't know that that was something that I should have done. So in that, I just thank God for the level of, one, maturity and boldness and growth that he's allowed me to have throughout my career. And one of the biggest things that I can tell you all that adversity in the workplace, in the corporate space, in my consulting world goes back exactly to what you mentioned, Fabi, and it's that honesty piece. It's that transparency mm -hmm. piece. It's that when we are able to connect with humans, there's a level of empathy that we're able to share with each other. And it, it turns less about being a big deal and something that needs to be punitive. And it turns more into, okay, I get it. How, how do we acknowledge this for what it is and how do we move it forward rather than it being an us, them, a me against you type situation? So I share all of that where I thank God for the opportunity to, one, have that situation of so long ago to be front of mind and reminded to me to be able to share in this environment. And the key takeaway that I would have as an encouragement to other consultants, to people in the workplace, et cetera, is to always know that in spite of how people might feel about you, your work always speaks for you. There's a significant need for you to be transparent and have the conversations. And even some of those conversations that are really uncomfortable and you don't necessarily feel like you have to justify yourself, you should. Because the truth and the reality is that my entire career, I've been amazing and phenomenal. What happens in that, though, is you constantly have people that are looking to throw darts at that amazing career trajectory because it, it unfortunately turns into a level of envy and it's like, okay, I have an opportunity to get you. Theo, Fabi, I'm going to allow both of you to respond specifically to this story and then we're going to move on. Um, I don't know. It just... It just... <laughs> I'm trying to think of the best way to approach just say it, sir. <laughs> no, it's for me. This, this even, even just the topic of conversation is just really making me like self reflect within myself. Sure, and and how I go about things that per se don't happen are <laughs> the response is not the response I feel like I should have gotten, or the situation does not play out. Like I feel, feel it should play out because the the story you just told is very similar to the conversation I had with you prior to the call. Okay. Um, so just hearing your perspective and hearing how you handle it, because for me, I'm I'm the type of person that it kind of let it go, mm -hmm. and I I'll, I'll handle it differently in the future. However, that that piece about just approaching it and how you can tactfully say what you got to say mm -hmm. and move on so that it doesn't happen again. Correct. It can spare you from a whole lot of domino pieces yeah. affecting you later and later on in the and, in and the unnecessary workplace. drama because ultimately yeah. I'm, I'm I'm only here to do a great job. That's it. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's my only objective at work to do a great job. Don't come with the drama. Don't come with the politics. Don't come with all the other ish that people like to have in their lives where they want to pull it into yours and they want to make non situations and issues into big adversity moments and yep. it, it's just so unnecessary have we lost hey yeah there you are i'm i'm so sorry my phone was frozen no worries but you're here now <laughs> and i was trying to press the button and i couldn't press the button so i missed a little bit of what was said okay no worries we'll we'll, we'll catch you up on the next story so okay all in all <laughs> Theo, definitely great points thank you for your response to it and we will move forward now, for me as a consultant, 
and this will be our, our last example, I can tell you all beyond the adversity within myself of getting to the point of just launching myself as a consultant. One of the other things that I, I see as a level of adversity, and this one definitely includes me and others, is just those levels and humps of having to get to that point of acquiring clients. Because it's not one of those situations where it's easy to acquire clients. Now, to my benefit, I have an amazing track record in history, which allows me to be positioned to a lot of different people, that, that my work really does speak for itself. But the adversity that I would say is that it really is tough to be able to navigate in the consulting space. And if someone tells you that it's not, they're lying. But the rewards on the other side of that adversity of knowing that, hey, I'm trying to win new business and I'm trying to grow my business. And I'm trying to work with new people. I've now spun that to being positive for me, that I, I, I see it as a challenge, that I see it as an opportunity where anyone that I approach, I'm easily able to talk to them about what I'm doing. And here's the key thing. And prayerfully, this will set somebody free. There's only one of two responses they can give me. Yes, I want to work with you. Or no, I don't. And the good news is I'm not going to lose any sleep with either of those answers. So the hallelujah moment in all of this is that there's a level of confidence that you can build based upon the adversity that you're experiencing. And it goes back to a circular conversation of what we've been saying the entire time. So I conclude tonight's amazing episode with it's all about how we choose to channel the energies that we're getting from the adversity, be it personal, professional, or any other level, and what we choose to do with it. Fabi, I'll allow you to give your concluding thoughts for tonight as well. Yeah, I think that's great, Aaron. And, and when you were speaking, I actually thought of a question that I feel like some folks might be able to benefit from. Sure. And absolutely. so obviously, when you're consulting like with an organization versus you being on your own, kind of like how you are right now, mm -hmm. and some of the services that you offer, there is a little bit more adversity that I feel like comes with that, right? And a little bit more reliance on you, right? Sure. Like you're the one supporting yourself. And sure. so folks that might have some of that adversity, whether they can't, they're not able to secure clients or things fall through, how are they able to kind of deal with that, knowing that everything's relying on them, you know, having more, more clients? It's mindset, Fabi. And, and mm -hmm. certainly, I'm sure many of you are like, I already knew he was going to say that. It really is. Because ultimately, what I've found is that when you have a gift and a special talent that you know is uniquely yours, mm -hmm. God will make space for that gift, for that talent. But he expects for you to do your part. Mm -hmm. So the expectation of you doing your part is you don't have time to be depressed in bed with the cover over your head. Like, oh, my God, I, well, how am I going to pay my bills? Because I can tell you how you're not going to pay them is there. And as much as you may want to do that, you just have to keep pressing you, you mm -hmm. have to understand, and, and we can just even look use some of the standard sales type things. Like literally, it's like a lot of people tell you, like, it's probably going to be about 20 no's before you get one yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so we do that basic math, like, ah, that's a lot. So it's, it's really mindset, staying positive, being energetic in what you're doing, constantly fine tuning your craft, constantly getting mm -hmm. better. Never feeling like, oh, I've reached the plateau and I've reached the Aaron Flush mountain of just being a mate. No, th there is no such plateau. There is a constant need to fine tune what you do, continue to get better, continue to pivot, continue to do what you have to do to make it happen. And I can tell you that I'm a living testament to God honors faithfulness. Mm -hmm. So when you continue to grind, to thrive, to keep pushing, it will come. Mm -hmm. Now, is it going to be easy? No. So, so let me just be the first to be the bearer of that news. And you can think <laughs> it's good or bad news. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. And ultimately, the results will come. 
And, mm-hmm. and what you will find, the example that you use, Theo, before the call, like literally it turns into a domino effect, but it turns into a domino effect of goodness. Like once you get that first client, before you know it, it's going to be the second, the third, the fourth. Mm-hmm. And then before you know it, it's like, wait a minute, I'm on my 50th client. Right. But I was ready to throw in the towel. Mm-hmm. So it's all about keeping that positive mindset. Keep pushing. Keep fine tuning your craft. Just keep doing it because right. it is about the activity. It's it's really about getting yourself out there. It's about you and I talk about this all the time, Fabi, about being in social circles and going to various networking type events and being unafraid to talk to everybody about what you do, your family, your friends, and everybody else. Because what you will find is that those connections start turning into other connections that turn into other connections, which ultimately turn into business. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. So I thank think that would be a question. great topic next, like for one of our topics sure, is the sure. connecting and networking piece. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then any concluding thoughts for you? Great question, but any concluding thoughts from you in relation to yeah. adversity? Yeah, overall, like I said, I think it... It it really is just something like you said, it's all about your mindset, how you're willing to handle these situations as they come up. You know, are you going to, and it's okay to be down in the dumps for a little bit, but you have to keep going and you have to persevere. And so for me, it's just, just really taking it day by day. Um, Moment by moment. Yeah. Moment by moment. But just learning, just knowing there's always a lesson to be learned in, in every single moment that you face with adversity. Yeah. And the key thing is learning from it. That's key. So Mm -hmm. thank you for that reminder. Theo, concluding thoughts, sir. Just have the conversation. You know, that's 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 the biggest lesson I learned at our conversation is just have the conversation. I know for me, I'm the one to avoid adversity and avoid conflict. But sometimes you got to stare it in his face and for you to get the results that you're looking for. Absolutely. You got to be comfortable in disagreeing. And and Mm -hmm. knowing that disagreeing is not a bad thing, knowing that adversity is not a bad thing, but you have to lean into it and leaning into it doesn't have to be nasty. That that's the problem. Like too often we've aligned disagreeing adversity to negativity. And it means that I got to come for you, that I got to attack you, that I got to do a Kendrick and Drake. You don't have to do all that. Like you, you can agree. Just totally disagree. You can have adversity and you can still get through it. Like you can have those conversations and and Fabi and I may never see eye to eye on some topics. That doesn't change our ability to still yet be friends. You, Theo, we're fraternity brothers. We're not going to see eye to eye on everything. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't make it a bigger deal. It doesn't mean that we have this major adversity between you and I that we can't overcome. It's true. So it's all about all of us making the attempt to to change the narrative around adversity. And we all have the ability to do that if we so choose to do so. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Thank you both. Let's look to the Lord. Heavenly Father God, we come before you yet again, just thanking you, God, for health, life, and strength. God, we thank you for such an amazing episode tonight and an amazing topic, God. We pray, God, that the listeners will be in a place where they will now view adversity from many different sides, that we hope and pray, God, that we will be able to remove a large part of the negativity that goes around with that word and really to truly be able to look at it for what it is, that, yes, there are things that happens in our lives that just aren't good. There are obstacles that come up in our lives, God, that are just difficult to get through. But we have presented an opportunity tonight, God, for our listeners to hear various vantage points of how to look at adversity. And we thank you, God, for that. God, we thank you for just continuing to bless our podcast. We thank you for blessing our families. We thank you for blessing our lives. And God, we would ask that you just continue to be with us. God, we would ask that you bless this dark world that we're living in. God, that you would just allow us to be beacons of you be beacons of light in this dark world. And God, we would just ask that you just continue to lead our paths. So God, we love you, we adore you, and it's in the glorious and magnificent name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. 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 Again. And to our listeners, as we started this episode, we just want to thank you all again, because the greatest part of this 
our ARP, Authentic Realness Podcast, is each and every one of you. And we don't ever want to take for granted just how amazing you all are. We thank you for the support. And we do have some new parts of the platform that will allow you all to text us directly. So definitely be looking forward to getting those details through the various forums in which we post our podcast. And then I just want to give that acknowledgement to Buzzsprout as we do week in and week out that look at me again. I know the name of of our partner Buzzsprout. (laughs) So look at that growth and development in season two. So we jumped right in and we got Buzzsprout right. So look at that. And I'm not looking at any notes. So look at God. And in that, any of you that are considering to go down the podcast path, Buzzsprout is definitely that partner that you want to go with that provides you that opportunity to upload to their platform. And then they do a dissemination to so many other platforms. As I've said on numerous occasions that there's never been a time that I have been asked of, hey, well, Plush, are you on this particular platform that I've had to tell someone no? So every platform that I've ever been asked, I've been in a situation where I've been able to say, yes, we're on that platform as well. So thank you all for listening. Thank you all for entertaining us. Thank you for truly diving in to this topic on adversity. Until next time, let us all stay and be spectacular together. Oh, yeah. Yeah.